I'm Steve for This Week With Cars and today I'm back with my Land Rover Discovery XD. In my last video I made sure that all the special Discovery XD parts were in place and today I want to start tackling the electrical accessories. And right now I want to take a look at the dual battery system and see if we can get that working. Here's what we have going on under the bonnet. The original battery sits over here. And if we continue on to the other side of the Land Rover, we have another battery right here. The end of the air cleaner box has been cut off so that a battery could fit in right here. And then if we follow these cables back, there's a solenoid right here that activates the second battery. And then if we take a look inside the vehicle, there's a switch right here. And this switch lets us select several different dual battery modes. If we flip the switch now, it doesn't do anything. Let's turn the ignition on just to make sure. Still not doing anything. So if we take a look at the relay, we have a cable coming from the original battery right here. There's also a little wire coming off of that, probably goes over to that switch underneath the dashboard. So power would come in here, cross the relay, and go out here to the new battery, the second battery. Then we have two legs that will activate the solenoid, connecting these two posts together. So one of these two posts is going to be a ground, and the other one is going to be the signal wire from that switch that activates it and telling the solenoid to connect together. Let's see if we can figure out which one is which. I've set my multimeter so that I can see resistances and it should also beep if the wires are connected together. So let's try this one here. Connect to that wire and then I'll go to a good ground on the vehicle. Nothing there. What about this one? Nothing there either. So we have a bad ground because one of these should be a ground. Let's try to go between our positive here and either of them. Make sure the meter's working. We don't see anything there either. Let's switch to voltage. See if this is even connected. So we should have 12 volts on this post here. So if I go to a good ground, nothing. Let's check the voltage from the other battery, the second battery here, going to ground. Okay, we have three volts. So that old second battery is charged to three volts and it is connected to the solenoid. Let's see why we don't have power here first and then we'll work on the activating circuit for the solenoid. That battery cable runs along the firewall over here, down, pops its head up right here, and then down here. So then, where does that go? Here's the other end of that cable. It's been covered in electrical tape. Looks like it's been covered that way for a long time. So let's get this off. Okay, there is a ring terminal there. That's gonna need to be cleaned up. looks a lot better. This whole positive terminal has seen better days, but for now I'm just going to undo this bolt. If it will come loose, it looks kind of corroded, and I'm going to connect this wire up to there. This is just temporary till we know if we can get this system working, and then I'll come back and replace this. I can disconnect my battery ground here. That makes it safe to put a wrench on this side.
Now we'll reconnect the ground. We'll see if there's any change at the switch. If we try our switch now, still nothing. Now let's test that we do have voltage here. So we'll go here and then to a good ground, 12.4 volts. So that looks good. What about down here? Here, nothing. And we still have our 3.3 volts on this side. There are these little caps that went over these bolts here. This one is black and this one is red, indicating that this is probably our ground. Let's see if I can see that going to a ground. Ah, the other end of that is right here. It was actually disconnected. So let's connect that up to our ground and see what happens. Over here at the battery, the nut was missing from here and I am thinking that this was here and then there used to be a nut on there but you can see it's corroded and there hasn't been a nut here for a very long time. I put a nut on here connecting that ground to the battery. Let's see if our switch does anything now. Oh, there we go. It didn't do anything on dual on but if I go to emergency on it does. Let's leave it on this. Let's turn the ignition on and see if that does anything. No. So let's leave this in the emergency on position and see if we can figure out what this is doing. Here we have 12.2 volts. And on this side, we have 12.2 volts. So with the emergency on selected, both batteries are connected together when the ignition is off. So now we just need to figure out how to get that other mode to work and figure out what exactly it does. I think we're done for now under the hood because the only thing that can do is turn on and off. So if the switch is working in any other way, it's gonna be done in here. So I've lowered the panel so we can get a look at the fuse panel. There are extra wires in here. There's this black one like there's some old electrical tape on it. We've got this red one spliced together there. And then we have another black one. Okay, there. So it, these three wires at least are not factory wires, but we're definitely looking for a power wire so let's take a look at this one. Let's check this fuse out, see if this is any good. It looks good, but I'm gonna grab my meter and test that. If this fuse is good, we should hear a beep. Okay, the fuse is good. Now let's switch the voltmeter to volts and see if there's any power on this wire that was running into that fuse. Nothing now, let's turn the ignition on. Okay, it's activated when the ignition is on. So that should be turning something on and off with the ignition. So do we think this goes to that switch or is it one of these? Okay, these black ones are connected to a switch that's right here, which I'm thinking has something to do with the lighting and not our switch over there. Okay, it looks like it's hard to, it's hard to see, but there's a bundle of gray wiring there, and this is definitely attached to it. And I think it's the same bundle that comes over to this switch here. So I wonder if I can get that. But it looks like it's zip tied up there pretty good.
Oh, there's our problem. This connector is not very good. So if I wiggle this, now we have a green light on there. So it's a bad connector right here. It's actually the, so I'm not, yeah, I'm not even holding on to this red side. Our bad connection is right here on this white wire. So let's get this out. And I'm going to put a new end on this. And that should fix our problem. I didn't put on this connector, so I'm going to make sure that mine will connect to it before I crimp it on. I've made that mistake too many times. Looks good. Now let's try this again. Turn the ignition on. There we go, we got the green light now. Wiggle this, no more problems over here. So now we have the green light for dual on. Middle is off. To the right, emergency on. So emergency on is on and the ignition is on right now. So when we turn the ignition off, emergency on is still on. If we switch it to dual on, it's off when the ignition's off. When we turn the ignition on, it's on. So that means in this mode, the two batteries are not connected until the ignition is turned on. So now we know how this works. When it's on emergency on, these two posts are connected together all the time. So both batteries are connected all the time. If we turn it to dual battery mode, the two batteries are connected only when the ignition's on. So that means when the ignition is off, if you have things such as your lights running or you're running a winch, it's only running on the original battery. And what that allows you to do is leave your lights on or use your winch and not have to worry that you can't restart your engine. If you end up running that battery down too far, you just move it again to emergency on. Then you can either turn it off, which the alternator will then only be charging your original battery, or you can turn it to dual on mode and the alternator will charge both batteries at the same time. Now I bought a bunch of battery terminals to replace all these bad ones. And I'm going to throw this yellow top Optima in here instead of this old red top. For one, this one's ruined and isn't going to come back. And two, a yellow top is a deep cycle battery. So it's meant to be not used and not charged all the time. That means I can charge this battery up and just keep it disconnected for emergency purposes. The yellow top should be able to handle the types of conditions that we're going to see better than the red tops did. So let me get to this and I'll be right back. The yellow top battery is in. I have the new terminals on. This is looking a lot better. And this is what I've done to clean up this side. Well, that was a lot of fun. I have been waiting to mess with that dual battery system ever since I picked up this truck. And it's taken me, what, eight months to get to this point because of all the other things that I had to work on. I hope you've enjoyed this video and don't worry, there are plenty more electrical problems with this Land Rover. So if you wanna see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.